Good evening. Hi, how are you? Doing good. Hi. Good. Hi, Victoria. Got the Hi, Janice. Oh, you're wearing you're wearing a really cool uh green vest today. I love it. Probably used to be Larry's at one time. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very good cert color. Yeah. So, yeah. How I you guys cold. been? I'm eating. <laughs> you get cold when you're drinking your hot your hot cocoa? I'm eating. Yeah. Oh yeah, I've got my cocoa here. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. We gotta get that. <laughs> That's like the staple of our meeting. Yeah, that's right. Where's yours? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. What have you guys been up to? Oh, well, among other things, getting ready for tonight. Um, something that uh, that's appearing to me at this point, uh, as you possibly know, I originally stepped out of recon about a year ago, um, mostly because I'm old enough that I didn't feel that I was going to be able to be at the ARC for a significant mm. time. And I think that's coming now. I'm focusing on having uh, training people for operations in the field, but I think what I'm going to need to do is to turn over to Dave and Neil, how they want to operate the ARC management of recon um, tonight, uh, for your information, I'm going to be covering uh, the recon manual, uh, second draft, but also what I think is going to be how we will have people work in the field once they're given assignments for zones. Okay. Uh, and then I'm proposing as another item on the conversation is an actual activation practice. Yay! Okay. So there's going to be three different items tonight. So hey. Fun of it. Let me see if I can. Uh, have you shared me yet as access for the. Oh, no. Group? Let me do that right now. I Thank you for reminding me. Let's see here. Make. Um, hold on. I might make you a co. Sure. There we go. All right. Let's. Okay, it should be okay. It's looking promising, but I'm realizing. Okay, this. Let me close this. I realize that on share screen. Okay, well, I'm trying to figure out where what I wanted to show is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, recon manual. Simulated earthquake uh, activity, but what I'm missing uh, are some figures I wanted to show. So let me figure out where they went. Because I haven't tried to do multiple shares before. And I'm glad I'm doing this now. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so let me see. Um, okay, that's not going to work. Um, so let me minimize and go back to my own files and see where things are. Yeah, I can, I think I'm going to be able to um, well, it's supposed to be there and <laughs> there it is. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, I think I will be able to do this without too much stumbling. <laughs> oh, yeah, there we go. Yeah. So now I need to figure out how to get back. Oh, okay. Stop share. So I'll just leave that there for now. Okay. And then I can pick it up eventually. In the meantime, I can say hello to Sam. Hi, Sam. Hi. Hi, Sam. How are you? Hello, fine, thanks. I'm I'm lost in my computer right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna work on getting a Google form ready for tonight. Uh, let's see here. Take my Oh, good. Now I can see you guys. I couldn't see any pictures. Oh, well, <laughs> not that that's a good thing necessarily. But. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I don't know if I belong in this meeting, but anyway. I thought I'd join it, see what's going on. Welcome. Uh, you will find it's a very casual meeting, I don't <laughs> okay. uh, What I'm curious about is uh, where do we pick up our name holders? Um, the, the badge, uh, the actual badge holders. Um, yeah. You can pick them up at the ARC the next time I'm there. Okay. And I think uh, Dave might have some too um, at his house. No, I think he actually ended up leaving with me. I have some. Um, we got our pictures here, so. Oh, yeah. nice. Yay. Yeah. Okay. We, yeah. We uh, I will probably, I got to figure out what dates I can be there next. Um, and then um, I can get that to you. I have, I have some. I have. Oh, no, you have some. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's no them. rush because we have our old uh, name uh, badges. And, uh, old yeah. Uh, yeah. This one is a little bit uh, bigger. That's yes. All. Yeah. How many? And it do has you a have, magnet. How many do you have, Eduardo? I think I have. Uh, I have four. Okay. Do you think you could help out, Jay? Um, sure. sure. I can do that. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Jay, Jay, and Jan. Uh, yeah, Jay and Jan, right? Okay. Yeah, that, okay. Yeah. Let me. Uh, let me, uh, I, I think I have your address, uh, Jay. I think I have it. And I, 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 can, I can bring it over to you. Well, either that or tell me where, where your address is and I can, I can come over and pick it up. If that's, um, whatever, you know, if you. If, okay, if you wh whatever. To, yeah, if okay. you happen to be driving this way. <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> don't make, don't make I, a special trip for us. Don't worry, okay, don't worry. Let me, let me okay. get rid of this, Dan. All right. All right. Thanks, Eduardo. No problem. No problem. How did everybody survive the wind? What, what wind? What wind? I know, right? <laughs> it was it was dead still here. Yeah. It wasn't even was a breeze. It really? Yeah. I was looking at the leaves both days on the trees. We had a lot of trees. They would not shimmer or wow. shake or anything. There was zero oh, that, breeze. Okay, well that's good. Is that a yes. that you had uh, Victoria, that you had a lot of wind where you are? We did. We're kind of in, I'm in Campbell. It's kind of like a little wind tunnel. Um, yeah. So it was, you know, it wasn't like crazy, but it was definitely like a little windy. Um, but I guess in the, in the upper elevations, that's where they're really seeing a lot of that wind. Um, at, at Alpine Meadows, they measured 150 miles an hour. Yeah, that's amazing. Cool. It is amazing. And down here, that is zero. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we, we, I was, uh, you know, our house is about 600 feet above sea level. So is okay. And uh, uh, I, I didn't feel anything <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. at all, at all. And I was just well, looking at the righteous San Antonio, but you know, nothing, nothing happened. 
Well, I, I'd heard uh, that since the, the, the wind is coming off the uh, land, it's going west. And when it comes off the mountains and then falls off, then it really speeds up. Now we're on the opposite side. We're, uh, we're on the slope uh, oh, that goes yeah. ah, okay. to the east. And so I think that's the reason why we didn't have any wind. Now, if we had been on the west side of one of these mountain ranges, it would have been entirely different. Yeah. It's just yeah. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad to hear that. At work, it was pretty uh, windy too. So, um, yeah, I'm really happy to hear that you guys were okay. I always think about you guys whenever I hear crazy weather, what's going to be happening. So I know. Good to hear we got out of that one, right? Phew. <laughs> B B B did you lose your did, did you lose your power? Did they have to cut your power? No, I'm really lucky. We don't have that happen too much. Um, you know, maybe because we're in such a dense area and we don't usually I mean we've had a couple times where that's happened, but usually it's like a transformer blowing or something like that. But yeah, typically we're we're pretty we're pretty lucky. So yeah, I haven't had any um knock on something. Um I haven't had any PSPS shutoffs or anything like that. So um, probably the only good thing about 2020 is <laughs> I haven't had my power shut off too much. <laughs> yeah. When I looked up our uh, address, it said that we were in an area that was not going to see uh, power shutdowns for energy control because of all the hospitals in the area. Right. And I'm yes. wondering if that might also play a role in how seriously they pay attention to shutting power in our area, even in a, a, a flag condition. Although when I looked at the map, there was only maybe a little bit of Campbell, in fact, had an indication of possible power shutdown during this supposed windstorm. If you went up and looked at Napa, it was the whole, virtually the whole valley. The whole valley. Right, right yeah. If you went over to look at Santa Cruz, there was a lot uh, in the Santa Cruz to Boulder Creek area. Yeah, so, uh, we dodged it for, and uh, hey, that's great as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, yeah. we we yeah. we only we only had about seven houses in Los Altos Hills that were affected by the uh, power shutdown. Oh, oh good. And okay. yeah, it's seven altogether, so it's not okay. So bad. Yeah, that's not bad at all. Not bad at all. No. So, very, we're, very we're, we're like we're like Larry at section 50. We're very close to yeah. the hospital. Oh, yeah. yeah, right. Yeah. If you're in that grid, you're pretty lucky because they're not going to be shut from that we, down. We, we're, like, we're, we're lucky. Gonna, we're lucky. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're you were very lucky. We're lucky to be near the hospitals anyway. But. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> right. For a lot of reasons, you're lucky. <laughs> uh, well, it looks like we have, um, let's see, John and Linda. Hi, Bill. How you guys doing? Doing great. Hopefully I'm not muted. Nope, you're oh, not. We can hear you. We can hear you. We can hear you. It's a miracle. Yay. It is a miracle. Yay. Okay. <clears throat> awesome. We'll give it just a couple more minutes, see who else we have join us. Um, I have the link for the Google form, but I'll wait until we have the majority of us since I've learned that if you're not on um, right when it's in the link, some people don't see it, they log on late. So um, I've learned that the hard way. So we'll give it, give it a couple more minutes and um, yep. we're gonna have the illustrious Mr. Carr. Uh -oh. um, yeah, I know, sorry, does that stress you out when I say that? I just think you're so great and you're so knowledgeable <laughs> about this that I'm just so impressed, so. I have brought my motivational beverage. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, good, good. You got, the, you got the meeting update. Okay, perfect, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I still think I still think I'm going to try and do um, a, a hot cocoa event on Zoom. I, I, Janice has inspired me. Yeah, I really think we should do that. Like maybe in December, I can drop some a little some little gift baskets everywhere with some hot cocoa, and we can make it and kind of chill out. Maybe we can uh, do something cool with our backgrounds, like you know, a fire or something. Yeah, I think that'd be kind of this fun, is, right? This is cool, and it's made out of. Uh... Prickly pears. Prickly pear. Yeah, which is a lot of seeds. I love so prickly pears. 
Yeah, you love bigger fairy. I love it's bigger fairy. It's wonderful. Fairy. It's wonderful. <laughs> Where do you buy that? Uh, we have a neighbor nearby that has some, some prickly pears, so we pick it up and we, you know. We, uh, that's, that's pretty uh, cool. They may, may put it my, my, this way. My wife does the older, older work. <laughs> that, uh, I, just, I just did the, uh, the, 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 uh, the, 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 the heart part, the drinking. Yeah, the, the heart part, right, yeah, the drinking, right. that's right, which is really very good. <laughs> very nice, very nice. Oh, Hi, Ben. Hello, Victoria. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Hi, Ben. Hi, Steve. Nice to see you, too. Hey, Victoria. All right. Well, um, we're at 7.04. Um, is everybody, does everybody have their... Larry, did you want to go over the binders to make sure we all have the right stuff? Does everybody have their binders with them or at least their paperwork? I got the second draft. You had the second draft? Okay. Yeah, perfect. which is, you said. Yeah, yes, I did. Perfect. Yes. Let me get organized here and make sure I can find okay. what I was proposing. So, um, <laughs> yeah, uh, so let's have you uh, not watch me stand <gasps> on toes until I figure out where I put all the things I'm going to be talking about. Um, let me see if I can do this right. And so, We'll get closer to. Uh, I was going to ask you guys while Larry does that. Um, this card right here, does that look familiar to you all? Yeah. The yes. yellow card. Yep. Um, what do you guys, how do you guys feel about me making this into more of a, mm -hmm. um, like a business card size to go on the wallet? Oh, it'd be good. Um, Wouldn't it be a little too tiny print wise? Well, I'm thinking that there's some things on here that we don't necessarily need to have. Um, the phone numbers are great, but if we, do we really need to have the safety first stuff on there? I don't know, just think about it. I know some people have asked me if we can do a smaller version to put in their wallets, um, cause you can't really fit this in too many places. However, we have our binders now, so that might be another good place. I could always make a, I need to be updated, I believe. So um, you could make two cards. That's what I was thinking. I could make a smaller one for people that are okay with that and want a smaller one and just keep a larger one for the people that like the larger size and then the safety first um, message on the, on the, on the other side. So um, just think about it and, and uh, tell me your thoughts maybe at the end of the meeting. There, there was this card, which I think is maybe from the ECC. Oh, okay. Which is a business card size. It's got the, Mercalli scale on the back on one side. Oh, nice. Larry, do you oh, remember? Yeah, the mic, are, mic? The, are these from the ECC? I'm going to bet they are, but um, they are from. And, they are. Oh, with that in mind, we ought to chase down a bunch of those so that our people have them. Yeah. Uh, one of the things I want to touch on uh, when we're uh, part of tonight. <clears throat> is in fact, uh, if you're not at home and you don't have your binder, it would be good to have the, uh, the frequency and the mic mic numbers in your wallet or purse. And so I think it's well worth making sure that everyone has one of those. Um, Victoria, you just got an assignment. <laughs> or in fact, that, let's, let's just pass that on to the ECC and see if there's an option that they can offer that we could get a we're not looking at a lot of them, but it would be useful. To have yeah, them. agreed. Yeah, Eduardo, do you know? Do, is there a way you can kind of track those down for us? Um, not that I'm trying to get rid of my assignment, but yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> I think I have the one that you showed, but I don't have the one that Bill has. Oh, okay. Can you maybe touch base with Drew and see if if she knows where that came from? Is it if it came from ECC? I don't know. I don't know. It could okay. have, uh, if it's got Los Altos Hills frequencies on it, it most likely did. Yeah, uh, it has It has uh, AA6BT, W6ASH, and 6NAC. It might be county. And it, it oh, actually, it might be. It says tuned to a county uh, resource net repeater. Yeah. So maybe oh. it must, must be county. 
Okay, well, I, I think the thing that uh, Tweeness will find it, and if, I think it would be a good thing to have as an additional uh, item for the wall. If nothing else, Victoria, nothing else. you might get a copy of it and create our own card. Yeah. Help the yeah. numbers on it. Yep. Yeah. Bill, are you able to send me, like, take a picture of each side and email it to me sure. by any chance? Yep. Yeah, no worries. Thank you. Thanks. Appreciate that. Okay, well, I'm going to turn it over to you, Larry. Okay. Um, I'm going to go through three different topics tonight. The, uh, the second draft of the, uh, the essentially, what do you do when the earth shakes uh, is the first part of this manual. The third part I'm going to touch on is going to be after you get to the ark and you, what sort of assignment will you be sent out on? And then there'll be a middle part of that possibly may not be as part of this manual because it will be how do you operate the recon uh, station and manage the recon program at the ARC. I'm going to put that aside for now because what I would like to focus on is starting from uh, you just shook the ground or the ground shook you is probably a more likely. <laughs> it's probably better. <laughs> and so my goodness, what do I do now becomes what this manual is supposed to be able to do. And so uh, I, I had put in the original binders a rough cut of a rough cut in the sense I wanted to make sure you had some of the forms if the earthquake occurred between the time you got the binder and I had managed to create a better looking and a more organized manual. Um, we're so overdue on the earthquake that I wouldn't be at all surprised to have it occur right, right now, for example. So in this binder, for the purposes of our discussion tonight, I would comment that the binder at the very beginning has in it now the check-in procedure sheet, what do you do, what frequencies, and the next page is going to be the mic mic definition. Now this is in the front of the manual even before the contents. So that if nothing else you have, what do you do in the first minutes right in front of you once you open the manual. Uh, the particularly uh, the rest of the manual I'm going to have you review and then if you see areas that you don't quite understand or think we should do differently, I still, I'm, I'm sending this out as I, I, I sent it out as a PDF file, but I have the Word document. We can always make improvements and changes. Um, the, the information in here, and I'm scroll down to the first part because you've all seen me talk about it. But what I wanted to reach for is something, and I'll bring it up now because of what I was going to talk to you later. And that is one of my plans is to actually have a simulated earthquake drill. And this will be where I would arrange with you collectively when you think most likely you'll be around. And I'll send a text message saying the earth just chuck. And you tell me how badly, and we go through all of the process that will be in this manual in an actual exercise, both in terms of those who have ham radios and those who would have to do by text. But that's something I'll tell you more about, but I want to touch on it now because it's a reason for you to be going through these forms, including such items as the unit log, um, and actually be comfortable you know what's being asked for. A lot of questions show up when you say, hey, it's a, what's a unit? I mean, isn't that gonna be more than one? You have a list for a whole group of people. And the answer is yes and yes. It applies to you alone as a unit or it can apply as a team uh, right. for your tracking all of the team members in a particular task get assigned 
Uh, if you're at the ARC, for instance, you may be a recon team member and unit log would track you as a team as well as you tracking yourself as a single unit. Um, I think the ham radio communications protocol, if you're already a ham, most of this is obvious. If you want to be a ham, it's something to think about, but it's also useful for those who are not yet hams or maybe not even planning to be hams, but would be wanting to figure out what they're hearing and why people, what people are saying when they, when they're talking. I a question in, in, for example, was my suggestion for using these levels of identification for event, for uh, incidents. This is actually taken from the Santa Clara County Aries Racy's message form where the items are listed, the urgency of a message is listed as routine, priority, and immediate, where basically uh, routine is for just general operations, priority is for a threat to property, and immediate is reserved for threat to life. Now, uh, you'll see there's two columns of uh, listings in the county message form. One of them is how quickly does this message have to be transferred? And that came about because at the one of the county drills I was running, I there was a message that came in saying the um, city uh, manager was coming into the EOC to watch our operation. And he was going to be here in five minutes. Okay, well, that's a routine message. And under normal circumstances, it would take an hour to two hours for that message to come through. Meanwhile, he's arriving in five minutes. So we ended up having two different levels of rating, one for on the threat and one for, okay, do you really need a routine message in five minutes or not? In our case, I just tell you that because it was, I was the guy on the gun who had to tell everybody in four minutes. <laughs> anyway, you get the feeling of what it was like. Um, I'm still leaving this portion with the idea that we can actually be driving independently in, or more precisely, driving each driving in their own car, but as a team. Our Baofeng radios are programmed, Dave has programmed them, if you add in program it, where the family radio service frequencies are in that radio. So that you could do a communication between vehicles on FRS and then use that same radio to communicate with the net control as needed. So keep that in mind. If you haven't already obtained a Baofeng, it's probably a very good idea to do so. Infrastructure, I'm reviewing this because I want it fits with some of the stuff I want to talk later. But at this point, the I added to this document a comment about downloading this. If you don't have the most recent maps, there's instructions now in this binder, in this uh, manual, details how to actually download and print those various maps. Um, the next item and the reason I'm pawing through here is that I wanted to talk about the windshield survey aspect of what we're doing. The purpose of windshield surveying is to quickly get the information. And this is becoming somewhat of a challenge if we have also talked ourselves into having to climb hills to look at water tanks. I, the message I'm proposing is that the survey we will be doing should be done from a vehicle. If you can't see the tank, that's a, you just simply have to note, tank is not visible from the road. What was pointed out by the Purissima manager was they aren't worried about the tanks in particular. They have um, wireless notification of what's going on at their tank. 
what they don't have is what happened to the cast iron pipe uh, 500 feet down the road where the earth has just opened up and you've got a massive flood of water. So the real message here is that you're actually going to need to be looking for geysers rather than water tanks. But I wanted to reinforce that point because I think it changes the way we look at doing the surveys. Something else I wanted to touch on while I had uh, this on, on the um, screen was, and let me stop for a minute and say first, are there any questions? <laughs> uh, oh, okay. The point I wanted to next make or discuss is probably a better phrase is we're going to be very limited in the number of us who are going to be available after an earthquake. And we're talking of needing to get our teams, get two, uh, team, two people together to make a team. I'm now suggesting that we consider picking comfortable locations in each of the three areas, the north, east, the northwest, and south, so that I could say our net control or the emergency um, uh, recon manager can say um, ham radio one, meet ham radio two at the school at the corner of Mora Drive and Eastbrook, or meet at town hall, or for that matter, meet at Foothill, but actually have some way that we can quickly pair team members who are not immediately neighbors, but close. And uh, if the recon manager does the job I'm thinking of, we will have put stickers on the maps saying where each of the, the responders are and be able to tie. And here's where I'm going to want to have you help me make it work. Possibly tie non-ham people who are, but who are listening to our messages and have them text me, for instance, and say, I'm available. I can meet somebody at Mora Park, Mora Drive, if you want me to, and actually arrange for a ham in one car and a non-ham cert in a second car actually arrive at the, the school or town hall um, in a reasonable time and start that survey that way. So think about that and let me know if you a if you think it'll work or b if you think there's a better way but if we can do that we could dramatically increase immediately the number of teams we put in the field early in the game which is of course where this needs to be done um the rest of this uh oh yeah i wanted to touch on this i put in here these maps, and as was pointed out, they're roughly done, but uh, eventually I would like to see them done more elegantly. But the real point is it's sometimes hard to visualize if you haven't been told where zones, oh, zone, zone five is, for example. If you live in the south part of the town, you probably haven't even driven this section of town, much less knew what the zone area looked like. And I'll touch, I'll talk about this some more as we get further along. But I wanted to reinforce the fact that we are, the town, the fire department is proposing a new procedure, but it's going to be quite a while before they have that organized. And in the meantime, we will be doing zone surveys by vehicle. And I, that'll be my next item for discussion. But this is now in the in the folder you get. Um, I'm going to ask all of you to read through these net control assignments because I'm going to be proposing this exercise that we have coming. And it would be really nice if all of you were comfortable with being net control for the initial Mike Mike reports, for example, or for that matter, and uh, the experience level reports, because you, we all can do it. It's just that 
most people are very nervous about doing that. And my intent is to get you all doing it so that you have at least found that, hey, it doesn't, it doesn't hurt to do it. So that's going to be something I'll, I'll give you as assignment. This is the form that gets filled out uh, based on the Mike Mike report. Uh, the experience level part of this, I think is important because I would like to have you have told the net control what your skill levels are so that the recon manager who's going to start using all the various capabilities will know whether you've ever operated at the ARC or if there's a, a town EOC, for example. And so that's something which will ultimately be uh, a value added, shall we say. Now, the I just realized that as you always do when you start going down to a forum like this, oh, I left the page out. So I'm going to have to, I'm going to email you additional pages and you can add them to your, your information as they become available. Uh, any questions on what I've said so far? Um, everybody, I not really question Larry, sorry. Um, no. I did put on the um, the link to sign in for tonight in the chat. So if you guys can all sign in, that'll be fabulous. And Thank if you. If you watch for that, I'm I'm going to be spending my time figuring out what I want to say next. I have and, a question, Larry. Yes. Uh, it seems like you are based on the the procedures that you displayed. You need to have your call signed. What happened if um, I'm not a ham or some of the people in this list, they are not a ham. What should they say? Yeah. And actually, they can they actually be on the radio? Technically, you can only listen if you do not have a license yet. You are not supposed to yeah, talk. That, that's right. And so what I what I would propose, the earthquake is self-alerting. You knew that the ground shook and you know how badly your house was damaged. If you if you have been listening, if you have a, a radio and were listening, you would be getting, you would know it's time to be offering uh, reports. We would have, I would have, if I were in net control at that time, I would have given you my cell phone number to text to and have you text your, your name, your zone and your Mike Mike report. That way I know who you were, where you are, and how badly the damage, what has happened at your location. I say text rather than telephone because of a bunch of reasons, not the least of which I can have six people text me at once. It's very hard to handle six people calling at once, even if they're leaving messages. And I can respond easily to a text message with another instruction if there's, for instance, um, if you're listening and you hear that they're asking for any of our recon members who are not hams but are available to work with a ham, again, you just simply send a text on, this is Linda, I'm available, I can meet at Mora Drive. Text comes back to you saying, Meet, meet uh, Eduardo at Mora Drive. You follow what I'm saying? Yes, technically that would be great if the cell phone also works because in the event of earthquakes, sometimes uh, cell phone doesn't work, cell tower drop, right? Yes. So what would and, uh, and happen in that kind of decision? And, and this is something that everyone should, I should have up in the front of this, is that all else fails, go to the ark because you know there are going to be people there who are dealing with all the various issues we're talking about. What we're doing with the, what I've described so far is trying to optimize our ability because we have ham radio, radio licenses to capture information much more quickly than could be done if we had to all go to the ARC and turn around. But if you find that you cannot text then the simple answer is, 
it's been a big you if you can listen to our discussion you will have learned either we will say well based on what we have heard there's no reason to activate cert or conversely we've had enough damage that we're going to activate cert all cert members who can hear this message please either coordinate to work in the field or go to the ark and that way and that's what's so important about having but everyone have a radio even if they can't talk on it is that you can get all sorts of instruction even if you can't immediately respond if nothing else go to the ark anyone else and thank you for that that triggered a whole bunch of answer but i i'm glad you brought it up okay um what I'm going to do at this point is move from this and I'm going to bring up the next item. Think of this as three stages. There's the earthquake has occurred and in the first minutes we try to organize our initial surveying of infrastructure. Once the infrastructure surveys are done and or other people have arrived at the ARC available to do work, we're going to have a different set of tasks that become available. And this really becomes, as we hear from people about more and more damage in one part of town or another part of town, or for that matter, if we don't hear from an area at all, we're going to be sending recon teams out to survey, windshield survey, groups of zones. And I will, that's my next topic. So. Let me stumble around and see if I could get that up easily. So I'm going to let uh, Victoria control for a minute while I go find the next part. Did everybody get a chance to sign in? I have nothing exciting to say, really. <laughs> OK, awesome. OK. Let me give a quick update to um, on the map. So I think we talked last week about um, the Kearneys and myself, um, you know, kind of looking at the maps that we had in the ARC. Um, it sounds like uh, Mari and Terry that we did find a, um, a map template and um, I think it's in the shared folder. So I'm gonna find that for you guys and I'll send it to you tomorrow. And maybe Terry can, and, and Mari and um, myself can kind of look at it. Um, to see what we can manipulate on it, if we can manipulate it. I don't know. I don't remember if it was PDF. Do you guys remember from the meeting if it was a PDF or not? Which maps are we talking about? The ARC map. I'm totally going off oh, off, okay. off grid on the recon. No, <laughs> Sorry. Just catching up. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'll look at it though, uh, Mari and Terry. Yeah. So this is Terry. Um, it was, so there is nothing that I could find. There are no construction drawings. There's no Google, you know, the, the current satellite images still have it under construction. So I took something from a, um, you know, a, uh, a document that, uh, the, that the college put out and I just created it in Illustrator. So it's a vector um, drawing and it can be manipulated so oh, cool. infinitely. So okay. I just don't know, I mean, we didn't talk you know, deeply about, so how scoped in it should be, should it include the, you know, the yard across the street from the fire station, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So, you know, look, I, it, it takes a little while. I'm not, you know, an expert at uh, Adobe Illustrator, but uh, it's pretty flexible. Okay, cool. Yeah, I think they did find something that they've used in the past. Um, I know we talked about that last meeting and it's, it's um, on, I think our IT shared folder. Um, I tested the link into the chat. Thank oh, cool. You. Thanks, Neil. Yes. Thanks, Neil. Larry, do you still need more time? Yes. Um, so, no, I'm fine. I'm just waiting. Okay. To okay. We're hey, done. Victoria, yes. is, your, is the best email for you the technical services one? Yes. Okay. Thank I'll, you. I'll send you that uh, card. Thanks, Bill. Okay, let me um, 
Yeah, here we go. As I was mentioning before, uh, what I've been working on has been the first minutes of an event and what we would do in terms of zone surveys and things of that sort. Uh, the next task that we would end up finding ourselves would be to report to the ARC and receive an ARC, receive an assignment from the recon group at the ARC. And what I want to now talk about is based on something that Neil had put together about how we might pick groups of zones to survey. And so I thought I'd introduce this as, uh, okay, you've now arrived at the ARC, you've checked in and you've gone to recon and they're giving you a, an assignment. And Neil, I'm going to want to have you and Dave be the probably the people who define how the recon station at the ARC operates. Uh, you've both been more recently involved in it than I have. And I, I think it would be advantageous for us to hear from you. I can help with it, but I know you both have been developing techniques that are past where I was. But let's leave that other than just a comment for now. What I did was to take Neil's concept and I wanted to present it to you as something I think would be a, a viable uh, possibility. And that's basically built into this idea that once the infrastructure surveys are completed, you're going to be basically looking for another assignment and you return to the ARC, the recon manager by that time has worked with the incident commander and they've picked on areas that they want to know more about. Um, what we had a long time ago done, uh, we're trying to shoot our phone, so stand by a minute. Yeah. I don't know. Just, to, just click on it. Ah, let it go. <laughs> um, the, the point I wanted to work from is that originally, way back in the Stone Age, we were told to basically walk our zones. Well, that might have worked when we had somebody in each of the zones, but if you look at a map of who we have active now, there are all sorts of zones that are don't have anyone in them, plus the fact that you are under the newer DSW rules, you are both need to be as a registered DSW team and you need to have checked in and been given an assignment in order for you to formally respond. That works for the idea of sending teams out to actually do groups of zones. And I'm going to show you an example of this but first, I was going to uh, offer a set of what I call codes, but what I think is really a way of trying to, to identify quickly what we find when we do a survey of a zone. Um, in the original version of this, there were long lists. Every, every house was had a street address on a form, and you checked off all the little things about what you found at the house. I'm proposing that we reverse this and we basically, if we see, and here, I'll, let's go to the codes part. If there's an okay sign, like the one the town is making, we just simply write okay on the form, on the map of the zone. And let's move to that. And then um, we can, I will send this out to you. You can look at this list Basically, what it's, it's offering is a way to quickly mark on this map, either mark on the map what is what you found, if it's information that is ultimately saying things are reasonably okay, or there's something really happened, the house is severely damaged, you have to worry about people being trapped. That's the call 911 and send incident report or if it's you can't see the house, that's not a big deal. It's worth noting. 
Fire is important, injured people are important, power lines are important. And then there's ones that are important to the town, but not necessarily 911. Roadblock, significant water flow, as I was talking about before. This is my suggestion. I is wide open for recommendation, evaluation, or change. But I will be emailing this to everyone with the idea that here's a piece of paper. Tell me what you think about it, and we'll work from there. I'm going to stop for a minute to move to the next image. And so stand by while I see if I can do that as quickly as I think I can. OK, here we go. All right, what I have here is the northwest area of Los Altos Hills. Basically, this is 280, this road here, and Page Mill starts here and goes up around and wiggles its way back down. One of, when, when Neil put together the list of zone groups, he, he clustered together the, contiguous zones such as these three as a assignment. And there be there are I, if I remember right, four there's something like 12 or 16 of these groups. Remember there are 58 zones. And so the idea was if you're going to have driven all the way this far out to look at a zone, why don't you use that time time while you're there to do this type of zone area, which is, I think, going to be a practical avenue. Now, I've created this type of an outline. This will be in the notebook for each of the teams, as I would envision that notebook being established so that you could actually use this to um, get a handle on your mental image is important when you start trying to deal with what streets am I supposed to look for? And do I look at that street when it crosses over a boundary or do I not? I think this would be a real value. I'm going to empty close that for a minute so that I can bring up the next picture that I have, which is going to be an example of this. And Let's see if it comes up straight upside or yeah. um, wait till I line it up so you can see it the way I see it. And then okay. okay. Um, what we're looking at here is zone eight. And as you can see, when you look at this, the streets are quite obvious, but also each of the properties are outlined and the street number assigned to them. So that you have an ability to use the street number as well as the general location of the map to realize that, wait a minute, there's, a, there's another house between these two numbers, because the, there's the driveway, and that the green number, at least at one time, was a certain number. Now, based on the past history, the, not all these numbers are still active. So they're interesting, but not necessarily um, usable. Let's say it that way. But the real point here is you have an opportunity to put on each of these boxes an O or a U or a W or whatever the code is, you if there's something wrong or if everything's okay, you know. Um, and therefore have a running map of what's happened in the zone. And I would recommend this as being uh, there's three of these maps now for the three zones that are in that zone group. 
but it allows you to keep track of where you are and what you want to do with these various uh, pieces of information. Uh, this is now the next step, of course, is now for the uh, incident commander, the, um, I, the IT people, or for that matter, recon management, to decide, is this sufficient information for them? Because if there's any serious issue, you will have sent an incident report. And the question that I would now turn over to the management people is, uh, would this map and it, with all the information on it be effective or would there need to be an additional effort on the part of the team to take the original list that we used to look at and transfer all this information to that list? Uh, and I'll leave that to management to think about and recommend. Um, at this point, questions? Wow. You were hearing me, I hope. <laughs> Larry, I'll ask a question. Yes, sir. Uh, so the question you just asked, I'm trying to understand exactly what you're trying to find out. In other words, you said, would this be enough information for them? Do you mean this simply uh, house numbers and street numbers and, and your letter codes be enough information? Or are you asking a different question? Well, it's a little bit of both. Originally, the uh, the map was used to try to find places, and then there was five pages listing every single street address and a whole series of issues possibly at each of those locations. Um, my approach to this has been more the other way around. I, my approach is I would argue that the important items are when something serious has happened. And so any of those serious events have been reported already in a detailed incident report and all poss also possibly 911. The rest of it, whether the house was not visible or you couldn't find it or all the rest of it is interesting information and it may need to be interpreted, your map need to, may need to be interpreted by you because of the way you write things or don't. And so the IT people or recon management could be having to decide, hey, that's useful, but I can't read it. I'm gonna need you to make this more um, on a regular form or not. I don't know how that'll go about. But like I said, I'm turning that question basically over to recon management. I'm thinking of myself now as recon trainer, not running recon, uh, I hope. <laughs> but at any rate, that's where this is coming from. Does that help you? Yeah, yeah, I think so. OK. Um, any other questions about this at this point? Or Neil, for that matter, do you want to comment on this, what we just talked about? I'm sorry, I've been multitasking, so I've been listening, but not following very closely. Well, I apologize. Something, uh, no, that's all right. And you won't get away either. <laughs> what it comes down to is I've been describing how we, I would propose annotating this zone map with the various information. Uh, was it all, was it okay? Uh, are you, uh, uh, the various codes that I created and report any serious, issue uh, as an incident report, would this map annotated with the various, I, either I found it, didn't find it, or things of that sort, be sufficient for you? Or do you need to have the field responder also fill out the original five page list of addresses with detailed information on? I don't think the five page list of detailed information as we used to do it is really all that useful. And we had a lot of discussions even back in the Bruce Martin days about that. It supposedly was a Marsha quote requirement unquote, but Marsha doesn't think she required it. So, so I think we should do what's best to give us the information we need. I think just marks on a map generally isn't useful enough 
And so we need to be transcribed to something else. Uh, even if it's just a list of the, it doesn't have to be the full incident for each mark, but it at least has to be, you know, something that's easier to transcribe because chances are only the person who made the marks on the map will know why. Okay, well then let me suggest another option that we have a, a, a sheet of paper that has all the street addresses listed and we have an acceptable set of codes that we just mark at the left of each street address. And that way you don't have to chase it on the map, but the this tabular form, the responder could then summarize, oops, took my right finger off the key. Um, could summarize what they have observed and have that be available on a, a separate document. Or since we're, what other towns do, since we're only doing exceptions, as opposed to trying to keep track of have we surveyed every last property. And in theory, as part of doing a zone survey, even if you're not looking at every property, you're at least looking at every street. Um, that we could just have a blank sheet of paper and you put in the address and then just the reason why you're putting down that address and okay. notes. All right. Uh, Mary, you had a question? Uh, did I, I saw uh, Mary? Sorry, we have um, two different uh, uh, group uh, categories where, um, of assignments that we might get um, at, on recon. Is that correct? Just so I, I'm clear about this. One is the, the critical infrastructure that um, we have maps of um, the different routes. And then there's another possible assignment that we could get um, from net control that says, okay, I want you two to go out to zone eight and I want you to survey the homes in this area uh, and, and report only on an exception basis what any serious incidents are. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, so basically, we, uh, I'm sorry, Neil, was that you? So, so we need, so what you're saying is we need not just the routes for the critical infrastructure, but we also need these maps that are more detailed with the, all the addresses so that we can at least find a particular area, uh, like a subzone. Yes, so, and, as, but I, what, I would, what I'm working on, in fact, it's in, out of view in my room here, is the, we had originally 10 notebooks and I'm proposing we would have notebooks at the ARC with this information available and you would be handed a notebook that says, go to zone group A and it'll have in the notebook, these maps, it'll have uh, all the information you need in order to uh, make the final report back at the ARC. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> so we, we would have to report to the ARC first, get that assignment and then go to that. Well, I think so, because at least my present experience is that once we, we once tried to put all of these into one package and it was two and a half inches thick. Yeah, yeah. Like 300 pages and it was realistically uh, hard to do. Even if we only were to put in the 58 maps in each notebook, the, the real point is that in reality, once the infrastructure surveys have been done, you should go to the ARC and formally check in and get the information in. See, when you're in the field, it's going to be in the initial five minutes of the of the event. The there's no management people at the ARC yet. In fact, there's nobody at the ARC yet. And so it's going to be an hour or so before the ARC and recon and everything is fully operational. There's a difference in how we would dispatch you and track you while you're doing the first half hour infrastructure survey. It might be me in my own home being either net control or recon manager. But once there is management at the ARC, all that information, 
all that information gets transferred over to the recon manager at the ARC. Okay. At that point, it makes more sense for you to be available at the ARC because the assignments may be something different. It may not be going to zone surveys. It may be going to a specific location where there's a massive fire okay. or uh, some other assignment. So the uh, that's up to, to, to the recon manager what an incident commander or for that matter operations officer what they think is the highest priority okay um now that could change and i don't see any really difficult problem other than the idea of having 70 or 80 pages in each person's uh, binder because you would have 16 pages just showing the zone groups and 60 pages showing you all the, or more, because some of these zones are two pages, you're getting into 80 or 100 pages. Now. Okay, it, that makes sense. That makes sense. I just, I just wanted to uh, be clear. Everybody else probably is clear because you've all been talking about this for a while, but I missed several of them. So well, apologies I'm, if I'm... Yeah, I'm very pleased you asked that for two reasons. One, I've always believed that if one person has a question, three or four other people were too shy to ask it. <laughs> <laughs> and the second part of that is by asking that you triggered my thinking in such a way that had me start offering ideas I might not have otherwise focused on. So anybody else like to jump in the water? <laughs> if not, I have one more topic to cover and that's probably a good time to switch over. So let me switch to my last point. One of the challenges, of course, is you can't read your own. Yeah, here we go. It's too small to print. <laughs> um, I'd like to propose a, a, a completely different kind of activity than we've been doing. I'd like to actually do an earthquake simulated earthquake exercise. Uh, we've talked about how we would report this information, but we've never really done it in a in full blown, hey, we didn't think of this or we didn't think of that type of situation. So my suggestion is that we do a simulated earthquake. And my goodness, every other word has to be, this is a drill, this is a drill, this is a drill. Because I remember running a drill at the county one time where we were talking about a simulated fire and we had this hand come on the air. Oh, I want to go to the fire. Where is it? Of course, it was pure drill traffic. So I changed it. And from there on, if the if we were had a uh, if it was summertime, we'd had a snowstorm. If it was wintertime, we had a flood, or at least a, a, a desert type thing. But the real point here, I wanted to emphasize at the beginning, is that we have to make sure nobody thinks we really have an, have a problem. It's all true. Having said all that, what I'm going to suggest, we start with the idea that you use your own street address, the last digit of your street address, as your level of earthquake that you're reporting. Our street address, 24285, becomes a Mike Mike 5 report. And if it's three or nine, whatever your street address number, last digit, that's your report of the earth of the earthquakes. And that way we don't have to chase telling you what to do. Um, if you like this approach, I'm going to end up sending a text message. When, once we finish this, we'll decide what would be a, a reasonable time. I said convenient. It may not be convenient, but what would be a reasonable time for us to all get the, get a text message saying, Hey, the earthquake just occurred. How badly were you damaged? Or what was your experience? Let me say it that way better. Um, and then actually pull out the notebook and follow the instructions. 
that are in the notebook about how you would report an earthquake. Because everything that's in a real event is what you should be doing as you find in the notebook. For those who are not able, who are listening, but don't have a hand license, this is when we start having you text message to me, and I'll give you, I'll have my phone number included, um, and this simply text message your name, the magnitude of the earthquake, and the ultimately, I, I'll be uh, fine tuning this, but my plan is to have the earth, say we schedule an earthquake at seven o'clock Tuesday evening, uh, two weeks from now, just pick a number. Well, because Wednesday would be our normal meeting for a recon. But we could either have at the end of this event, I would say, let's get together on Zoom at, at eight o'clock and do a hot wash or simply do the hot wash the next day during our recon training session. But the concept is basically, let's actually find out, can we realistically make all of this happen? Can everybody reach the repeater? And those who are not hams, can the text messaging work as smoothly as we think it will work? Um, and as I commented earlier, if the, the one missing link is if you cannot connect, I would have you telephone my other phone, uh, my home phone, so that we could have your message and not interfere with the text messaging that I'm getting. One way or another, I'd like everyone to have gone through this process of actually having a, a chance to find out what it would be like to go through and actually report my, my values to um, stay on the air and report what your experience, what your experience in different portions of the uh, tasks might be and see if it all worked. Um, would that work? Is there any problem with what I've proposed? Let's start with that. No problem. The only thing I'd ask is whatever date we pick, give us a 24 hour reminder ahead of time, just so we're, you know, the equipment is a little bit staged ahead of time, if need be. I think that's an excellent, uh, would you want that? Uh, would you accept that as a text message? I sure. find if it comes by email, I, I, there's so many emails, I can miss it. But sure. In fact, that'd be your way of finding out if we all received your text, uh, we could re re uh, respond to you on the reminder. Response. Yes. Okay. That's, that's good. Um, hey, Larry, uh, yeah. excuse me. You use sure. 285 as a, uh, as a sample, um, which is good. But uh, what happens if you're zero? <laughs> it's the last digit. Well, you know, I, I, I One or two or... On that. there's two choices and, the, and uh, nine is actually, I, if I remember right, uh, total catastrophic earthquake. So Mike, Mike, nine. Um, I wasn't going to bother. I just thought you'd be Mike, Mike, zero. Uh, or you could be a <laughs> Mike, Mike, one. Either way, you didn't feel the... Mike, Mike, one. I didn't feel anything. Okay, got it, got it. Yeah, I got it. And so that's in the... But you bring up a point that I've chased already. Uh, I'm comfortable with either choice. You can either switch right. to zero to a one or just offer zero. It's the same. Okay. Same. Okay. All right. They both no problem. Them. Okay. Anybody else? Most maybe the same thing. Yeah. All right. Uh, I will send this information out to all of you so that you have a chance to look at it again. But now let me ask the question since I, at this point, have you as all together. Oh, and Mari, I'm sorry, uh, Victoria, uh, could you send me a list of everyone? I know there are a lot of people, but because I was looking at my screen, I didn't see how many or who all eventually were part of the list. Um, yes, I can do that. I also, for you, those of you who have not signed in on the Google form, I just resent it again. Um, if you could sign in, that way we can make sure we get everybody um, on the books for who's here. And also, I did order um, the radios. They're coming on Saturday. Ah. 
So I don't know if we want to do some kind of dissemination of those and a training prior to that so that people know what they're listening to for those of us that are not um, hams. Or do we even want to get that technical for this one? Well, I think the answer realistically is going to be that when the earthquake occurs, there are going to be a very large number of hams who suddenly decide they want to be part of emergency operations and they're going to show up on the air with no background on how we operate, no idea of what what we're doing. And that's where net control gets to be a bit exciting because the combination of having those who know what they're doing combined with a bunch of people who hadn't really thought about reporting anything is going to mean some amount of net control uh, being controlling, if you will. And so the answer to that is if people who just were listening I, I think our net control, probably me, will be offering guidance along the way. So I don't think anyone needs to feel nervous. Having said that, um, my phone number and my email are there so that if you have any questions, if you want to experiment with your radio or you want to just simply talk about it, um, that's why I'm here. Um, would that Tuesday be uh, two weeks from from now? Uh, yesterday, two weeks from yesterday, be? Uh, is there anyone who would find that seven o'clock to whatever eight difficult? Well, and I, I look forward to a busy night. Um, any questions on anything I said? Yes. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. What day was that? Uh, the tenth. Huh? Right. Sorry? The tenth, November tenth. Okay. I didn't have to count them as quickly as you did. That's great. It's not next week. It's the week after. No, right? Yeah, because yeah. next week we've been doing this on alternate Saturday. Yeah. So November tenth. Okay. So Larry, my I have a question. So we have um, two simulations. One is this practice on um, putting in mic mic reports. And the other is to practice uh, in a tabletop way to be net control operators and record these things in? Uh, uh, the answer to that is yes, uh, but. <laughs> uh, the but the yes is that I would like to have us all be doing net control things and of that sort, practicing that. What I would like to try to do, though, is to do that over Zoom. Mm -hmm. Because I think it would be, uh, we'd have a better chance, number one, for people who are new to the game to feel they're among friends. And I've always argued that when we're doing this sort of thing, you can do nothing wrong other than not do anything at all. Mm -hmm. And so, the answer would be we would then be actually um, practicing. I would select someone to do one of the uh, net controls and we'd have a couple of people call in and then r rotate that around among knowledgeable hands and those who haven't done anything like it. The reason for that partly is that way people who don't have their license yet get a chance to be part of the process and maybe get their license sooner. Who knows? Uh, there was another question, I believe. Or if not, is there another question? Okay, then I will turn this back to Victoria and say thank you all for listening. Thanks, Larry. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Larry. That was great as always. Um, I think I missed some people uh, when I sent the email out earlier um, for the updated um, manual. So I will do that, um, send it out to you guys. Uh, Larry, I will send you a list of who was there tonight. There's just a couple more people that we don't normally have, which is like super exciting. Um, I think we had 20 participants tonight. So um, I'm really happy to see that. Um, and then I think 
Larry, why don't you and I come up with a plan? I know that you were talking about doing some Zoom like radio training. Um, so I thought maybe we could look at that too and see if we want to start those sessions um, as well. Cause I know it would be good for us to practice that a little bit on the hand, the hand talkies as well. So um, something to think about too, on top of all the other great things you've done. Um, Victoria. Yes. Is it possible for the, the, the recon hams to uh, call into the, the Monday night nets, the specs net? It's a good practice. Because we currently, I think I've only seen Mira uh, call in, um, but it would be nice to uh, to get more people to practice. It's every week. Yeah, I, if if I can get that information, yeah. Um, yeah, I can put that out to some practicing. That'd probably be good for me to do too. Yeah, that would be great. Okay. I yeah. Awesome. I think it would be great if uh, Larry, if we could have like a Zoom meeting starting like 15 minutes before Monday night net, where uh, Larry could kind of help us kind of get uh, get tuned in so we can participate, uh, feel more comfortable about it. Oh, that's a good idea. Larry, how do you feel about that? First, I have to unmute myself. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, I, I like the idea with one caveat that, that if we were to do it that tightly before the meeting, it limits to what we do. I, I think what you're describing is a, is something I would like to have us more have more time without a immediate uh, deadline. Uh, but I think it's good. I, I think what you're looking for is 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 something that we have not really done. In fact, if I look at this, we've got what, 5, 10, 15, almost 20 people. There's been only me talking. And I think, <laughs> <laughs> and what I really am saying is, I can, I can I'll, I'll share something. When I first bought my first hand radio, uh, I sat down and looked at the screen, uh, the keyboard and there were three layers of buttons. If you push the wrong <laughs> button, you couldn't get the, the darn thing back. That's and true. I remember saying to myself, and I'm supposed to speak on this thing? <laughs> well, obviously I've learned how to do that. But the reality is there are a lot of us who never get past that point. It's either they push the wrong button and never got back to figuring out and started over again. <laughs> but more to the point, I can remember there were not always friendly people at the other end of the conversation. There's always somebody who really, well, I, if you, it's something I learned that surprised me that there are only about 10% of ham radio operators are interested in emergency communications. The other 90% of them, some of them are, think it shouldn't be used for that. And the reality, of course, is that that sort of thing, you can once in a while run into a person of that sort. In our group, obviously, we're all interested in making it work. So it should be more comfortable to all of you that, hey, I can do it here. Because if I don't do something exactly right. I've got friends to help me do it right. <laughs> right, right. And, and that's what I wanted. Right. That, and that takes time. That's why I would propose that we pick an evening, for instance, and just go around the room, pick each one to run a, a mini check-in or to run, a, be net yep. control for a bunch of people to, to all try to speak at once. And actually, yep. Uh, have everyone have a chance and many chances to do this in an environment where only your friends are listening. And it makes a big difference. So that's yeah. Larry, yeah. You know, um, I, I think it also would help because um, a lot of us 
don't get the chance to practice even saying our call sign. Yeah. And, you know, that always is a stumbling block as well because you don't want to make a complete ass of yourself on the <laughs> on, on the <laughs> that, yes. net. So, you know, even a tabletop exercise where we just practice talking, yeah. even yeah. without our our hands, just practice yeah. getting the information across would be helpful. Don't you think, Shao? Yeah. I, I think so, I think yes. So. Uh, I'll, I'll take a thought. It's like, let's do a standalone event we yeah. all kind of get uh, help each other get get, uh, get the radios tuned up we go out there and see if we can key up and reach uh <laughs> reach the uh the repeater and so on that that'd be great to do that yeah well that's coming and, uh, but i think even before we uh, and that is one of the ideas i have on my list of oh yeah we're going to do that next i think uh but i like this and the idea then becomes we can actually go around and each person gets a chance. And if you, I'm going to even suggest those who are not yet ham radio operators can present their first name phonetically. Oh, <laughs> oh Jesus Christ. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know how to can do that. Well, you can do <laughs> Ed. You can do Ed, not Eduardo. <laughs> Good guy. It's amazing. I, I can say my, my call sign, but that's about it. <laughs> well, that's the whole point here. If I'm, if I'm trying to ask somebody to tell me a street name, and the street is some unusual name, you're going to have to do it phonetically. Yeah. Well, the yeah. simple answer is get a big sheet of paper and have all of the various letters and yeah. their phonetic yeah. side by side. I, when I did my call sign when I first started, I had a sheet of paper phonetically what my call sign was. But uh, I remember as a, as a kid, I used to do the multiplication table in my mind. And for the first <laughs> year with Sam Radio, I used to do phonetically, I tried to write sentences phonetically. It's non trivial. <laughs> yeah. But so I think that's the point. The, the, the real point here is that practice does not necessarily make perfect, but it sure beats the alternative. Uh, so that's where I come from. And yes, I think the answer, the short answer is, I think that, uh, Shell, that's a good idea. I think we should and will put it on the list. And what I would think for an example, I've already been chewing on this, is that everybody is muted at all times unless you're about to speak, just like you're about to push the button on the radio. Yeah. As soon as you finish what you said, you mute again. That way again. you start training yourself, push to talk, not to think. And actually right there. use so that mechanism as a training process that you would otherwise be doing in ham radio anyway. So. Those are my uh, ideas of the night, if you will. But thank you, Shell. That was a good suggestion. I think that's totally awesome. I think we should call it Friendly Radio Talk with Larry. <laughs> that's our next series. <laughs> Love it. But it's yeah. true. It's true. Yeah. I mean, we did this at our house pre-COVID, and I would have various uh, non-hams come over to our house. And then I told them, you can't do wrong. You can just simply uh, do something that might be better done and we'll tell you how. And well, there are several people that now have their ham license because of the visits to my place. COVID's gotten in the way, but then Zoom just arrived. So. Yeah, yeah, we could, we could uh, definitely work through it, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Great ideas, guys. Wow, you guys must have had some coffee before this meeting. I love it. Everybody's got so much energy. And poor Larry, every time we have this, you get you get more assignments. I know. It's <laughs> not, I've been doing this for 22 years. I'm not too surprised I'm doing this starting the 23rd. Right? I started, you're great at it. Day, I started uh, Ham Radio Emergency Communications actually at the county the very day I retired. But I ran the program for NASA for three years before that. So I've been at this now, what, that's more like 25, seven, 
27 years of emergency communication. I well, we're definitely benefiting from it. Definite okay. benefit. So thank you. I'm really happy you're part of our group here. Um, it's working so far. All right. Yeah, great. All right. Well, um, I bid you all good night and um, thanks again for being here. Um, I am going to um, get these recordings up tomorrow. Um, I've been sort of overwhelmed at work, but I have on my to-do list lots of things tomorrow for, for Los Altos Hills. So um, get ready to see a lot of emails for me, <laughs> as always. Um, all right, cool. Well, you guys all have a good night. And thank you again, Larry. That was awesome. Good. All right. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.